So now we are going to introduce software security. So we will uh, start by comparing uh, security and reliability, which is two related but uh, rather different things. They have uh, considerably diff different goals. And then we will talk about uh, changes, changes to the environment that and uh, changes to a piece of software uh, in itself too, uh, which usually introduce uh, a lot of security. So as long as our computer is offline or, or uh, used only by ourselves, and we don't have any accessories whatsoever, so no USB devices or anything, uh, then we don't have any problems. Because these problems, they only start to occur when other users start using our software in some way, and then input to our programs uh, isn't what we expect. Uh, so for instance, as soon as we have a program uh, or some data, uh, provided by someone else, we cannot trust the outcome. So as soon as we connect our system to, uh, to the internet, we, we don't know what's uh, going to happen. So software reliability, uh, this is the concern of quality uh, in the sense of accidental failures. So for instance, the assumption that input is benign. So this is kind of what uh, most people do in their introductory uh, programming courses. They do uh, accidental failures. So someone accidentally input uh, a character instead of a number uh, when the program asks for the age or something like that. So that's software reliability. We want to avoid accidental failures. Software security, on the other hand, uh, this is quality in the sense of intentional failures. Now here we must assume that the input is malign. So someone uh, input, someone designed this input to try to uh, mess with our program uh, in some particular way. Uh, so this is probably what the teaching assistant would do uh, to your program when they are testing if it's if it's working or not, if you have a malicious uh, teaching assistant. So then the question is, uh, this fancy, fancy word, test-driven development, which is a uh, uh, buzzword du jour uh, at the moment, uh, where you, you continuously test your code as you write it. So you basically write up a bunch of tests and you want to and uh, see that it actually uh, conforms to these tests as you write it and see that you eventually pass all tests. Uh, now, you can't test security. Uh, so the, the approach you need to do is to actually do code review, uh, have a software security group uh, with people dedicated to software security and they are they specialize in this and they support uh, the rest of the organization and this software security group should be in, uh, integrated into the organization but it's also nice to uh, have a so-called satellite which means you have uh, people uh, specialized in in software security but they are not in a separate uh, department or something, or in a separate group, but they are rather spread all over the, uh, the organization uh, throughout. So sure, uh, test-driven development uh, is still useful. It's just that you can't really test uh, security using it because uh, you never know what kind of input uh, you will get and you can't test all kinds of inputs. Uh, that will take a lot of uh, effort, uh, computational resources. Uh, another problem uh, that occurs is changes. So there are uh, systems which are designed to be secure and they actually are secure. But then uh, someone needs upgrades or 
Uh, they don't necessarily need upgrades, but they want some extra features that weren't there before. And uh, this might come from updating a component or utilizing uh, the system in another environment. Uh, for instance, a classic example is uh, the payment systems, uh, the, the, how, how you pay by card. So originally this system was designed to, for ATMs. So where you take your card and you put it in the ATM, which is located uh, at a bank. So it's on the outer wall uh, of a bank. Hard for anyone to access, but bank staff. So you enter your card there and you put it in and uh, enter your PIN code and you get your money. And then you walk away from there. And then someone had the brilliant idea that, hey, we can take this system and we can put uh, one of these terminals in the stores and then people can pay directly and they don't need to carry cash uh, around. However, it turns out that uh, in uh, this is a completely different environment. So the ATM was built into the bank, into the wall of the bank, whereas this machine would be uh, out in the open in uh, any supermarket. So uh, you must uh, design the security much uh, better in this way. So it's, uh, but it's in the in in this case they they actually just moved it, uh, ported the security uh, the the whole system to the new setting, and didn't adapt security. So there were some problems uh, in the beginning. And that was everything for this time. Uh, thank you very much.